Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Balanced Blonde Podcast, Soul on Fire. If this is your first time listening with us, welcome to the show for the first time ever. We're so happy to have you here. Today, I had my first guest on the show in so long because the other episodes I've been doing during this quarantine have been solo episodes for the most part. And then the episodes with guests were all recorded pre-quarantine. So this episode was recorded on Zoom with my dear, dear, dear friend, Raquel Mantra, who many of you probably know from her hit podcast, Your Own Magic, and her fabulous social media presence on Instagram, Raquel Mantra. She is a just an all-around fairy, Pleiadian, angelic being. You'll hear our story of how we became friends, but it's a fun story. I can't wait for you guys to hear it. Raquel was in Bali during our honeymoon, me and Jonathan. So we got to spend a lot of time with her there and it was so fun. And we always joke that Raquel was literally a part of our honeymoon because she was. We had dinners at Alchemy and work sessions and so many different things. Um, She's just such a wonderful spirit, a wonderful soul. And since I've been called to doing all these solo episodes and not really doing a lot of interviews or any interviews during this time, I was in the bath one day and just had this huge hit that Raquel needed to come on the podcast. We've been talking about doing this forever. And since she is such a wonderful nomadic traveler, we just haven't been in the same place in so long especially on a non-honeymoon kind of thing. So it was just perfect to record this online. And our conversation was so fun. We hit on so many different topics like spirituality and Raquel's upbringing, um, her history with food and healing her relationship with food, living a nomadic lifestyle, starting a podcast, who her spiritual mentors are, Um, And we really just flow. It's just a conversation. We chat and chat and chat. And I ask her some questions that I've wanted to ask her forever. And that's the fun thing about having friends on the podcast is you get to ask them questions about themselves that you probably wouldn't ask them on any given day. So we go deep. We have a good conversation chat here. And I'm really excited for you guys to hear it. And in other news, by the time you guys hear this episode, I will be water fasting for my second long extended water fast this year for Lyme. I don't know how long I'll be there, either two or three weeks. So I have some good episodes saved up for you guys while I'm gone. So send me all the good vibes on Instagram, social media, all the places. I'm gonna need the extra love and support. So any kind words you can send my way, I will be super grateful. And yeah, I'll be in deep healing mode. So we'll see. I have nothing but good feelings about it. I know that I'm healing. It's really exciting. It's been a long time coming for me. And if you've been following on Instagram and social media, then you know I've been feeling better than ever lately. And that's exciting and a very welcome feeling after all these years of really, really not feeling well. So we can do a whole episode about that, but just wanted to update you guys about where I'll be by the time this comes out. And then today is the last day for you to sign up for the Institute of Integrative Nutrition with my link, which we'll leave in the show notes below, which will get you $2,000 off of your tuition if you so want to start this health coaching journey in the month of May. Otherwise, you can still use my link at any time. You just won't be starting in this session of IIN Nutrition School. So if you want to learn more, last week's solo episode goes all into that. And before we dive into this episode with Raquel, I wanted to thank our sponsor for today's episode, Four Sigmatic. Four Sigmatic is my go-to for all things adaptogenic mushrooms and coffee alternatives. Although if you're not a coffee alternative person, they also have coffee. And when I'm able to drink coffee, 
when my body is a little bit more healed, I will be back on the Four Sigmatic coffee train. But for now, I am all about their coffee alternatives like chaga and reishi in the morning. Um, I love all of their adaptogenic blends. I love their elixir mixes, which they have one with lion's mane that's really good for thinking and alertness in the morning. They call it your brain's best friend. And just so you know, you can use the code BLONDE at any time to get 15% off of Four Sigmatic products. And you can also go to foursigmatic.com slash blonde to see my favorites and the things that have been my forever go-tos with Four Sigmatic. But honestly, they're coming out with new products all the time. They have so many immune boosting products that are very timely for everything that we're dealing with right now. And we all want to boost our immune systems and feel good. So you can check out all of their immune boosters on their site. One of their immune boosters is Chaga, which happens to be my favorite flavor of theirs and my favorite type of adaptogenic mushroom that always makes me feel good. Um, it makes me feel alert in the morning without giving me the same jitters that coffee gives me. So when you go to their site, you can either choose to shop or to learn. And if you learn, you'll learn all about adaptogenic mushrooms. They have so much good info on there. We've also had the founder of Four Sigmatic Tarot on the podcast to talk about mushrooms and foraging mushrooms, what adaptogens are and how they bring our bodies back into homeostasis. So it's not like um, just your regular old portobello mushroom that you're frying up with your morning breakfast. It's completely different. Adaptogenic mushrooms have functional properties that work with your body and your hormones and your organs and everything about you to bring your body back into the homeostasis that it needs. Basically like a plant, plants adapt and our bodies as humans should not be that different. Um, all Four Sigmatic products are organic, gluten-free, vegan, third-party lab tested, and very, very low in sugar, which of course, all are musts in order to be TBB approved. So check them out at foursigmatic.com slash blonde. Enjoy that 15% off discount with the code blonde and let me know what you think. Tag me on Instagram when you try. Um, they have so many fabulous products now. They even have skincare. So I could go on, but they are my favorite brand in the world for a reason. Check them out. Fall in love and enjoy. Oh my gosh, they even have a TikTok. I just saw on their website. You know, I am so into the TikTok life right now. Please find me on TikTok at The Balance Blonde. I'm having so much fun on TikTok and I'm sure... TikTok will help get me through my water fast. So thank you to Four Sigmatic for sponsoring the show. Now let's dive into this episode with my dear friend, Raquel. Raquel, we have you here on the podcast. This has been like so many years in the making to have you on Soul on Fire. It's so it's special. Been before Yom was even born, I was literally you. And you've inspired so much of my journey, not even just the podcast. You have no idea. And then now you're like a sister to me. And it's just like, what is my life? Life is very special and cool that way. Because if we trace back to when we met, which was hilariously enough at Beaming, right? In LA. Yes. Yes, we met, but there was no context there as to like <laughs> anything really, but we met. And then it was nothing, though. for me, I remember just, it was some insane energy and I obviously wasn't going to be like, whoa, there's something really weird here. <laughs> but <laughs> and you were, I don't remember, but you were anxious to leave the premise for whatever reason. That sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Um, but were you working there or you were just... Oh. I was just like hanging out. You were just yeah. in there. Okay. okay. I remember that. And then a couple of years passed and then you moved to Hawaii. You started your podcast with Ali. Yes. You know, magic. She's been on your podcast too. Yes. I remember when she recorded an episode with you in her room and we were just like prepping her, getting ready and prayer and everything. Because you guys are so good at that, which is something <laughs> I want to talk about. Like your spiritual practice and just 
how intentional you are with everything. Oh, yeah. Which is so cool. So you started that. I came on your podcast. It was so fun. We became friends. And then you were literally on our honeymoon with us. <laughs> like that's Bali. how it was. Friends, I know. <laughs> It was such an honor. Oh my gosh. I felt so bad at the same time. I'm like, this is really their time. But I think that'll, because other people also would just come up to you guys, you know, and you Mm -hmm. also had the TBB followers there and everybody knew it was your honeymoon. So of course, everybody was like super honoring that, but you guys were like, come and eat cake with us. Raw vegan cake. It was so special, honestly, because we kept talking about this. Like we were on a three week honeymoon. And it felt really long and it was really fun. And we just kept saying, how lucky are we that we get to see our friends on our honeymoon, but we're also on the other side of the world. So it was... Bali and especially Ubud is a very cool vortex like that. You know. Um, Absolutely. absolutely. (laughs) Do I know. Yeah. Bali, it's interesting how it really does bring people together. And I feel as though it's very intentional, divinely guided whenever it is there. It's not just a random meetup, even though nothing is so random, right? But Mm -hmm. there's something extremely magical and medicinal because there was a lot you had no idea, but energetically that was going on with me and being in your presence because you are a reflector. I remember going home and just was like, absorbing that information that you had no idea you delivered. You still have no idea. And I was like, whoa, this hit me hard and I needed this so bad. And it's of course, Ubud means medicine mm-hmm. in Indonesian or Balinese. It means medicine. Right. So um, with that being said, there's so much medicine and healing and a whirlwind of a journey that always unfolds whenever you just step foot into the spellbinding land of Bali. It's so true. And you've spent more time there than most, which I definitely want to get into. Um, But first, before we do, I just want to kind of start at the beginning with you. If you would just tell our listeners who you are and where you grew up and things like that. Absolutely. Well, my name is Raquel. And I guess on Instagram, Raquel Mantra, but just Raquel works. (laughs) And um, so... I actually grew up where I happen to be right now. And I don't often spend time here. I spend pockets of time here and I never deeply appreciated it until recently. And that is Park City, Utah, which in and of itself, it's like a vortex of just being in and loving the presence of nature and wilderness and just the magic that unfolds here when it comes to running into the wild which is one of our favorite songs, by the way. Yes. The <laughs> but, <best song. laughs> but I receive so many different synchronicities from nature when I'm here. So I have another deeper appreciation for the place that I was blinded by before because I was so consumed. Let's rewind, what, four or five years ago with the noise of the media and my surroundings. And at that time, I was living in LA and just so involved in Los Angeles not that there's anything wrong with living in Los Angeles. I intend to go back as Jordan knows. Yes. But at that time from where I was, I was very deeply, deeply unhappy because I, and, and it felt paralyzing. I didn't know because I was not quite conscious yet or even aware of anything, any sort of spiritual modalities or healing modalities, not aware at all. The only thing I was aware of was whatever was on Netflix and YouTube and what my school studies at USC were teaching me. And so I was in a relationship um, and he was wonderful. And we indeed had served our purpose with each other. But when I started to open up to another journey um, where I was starting to get my health back together because I was well overweight near almost leaning near obesity in a sense, like it was because my, my diet was um, eating an entire large Little Caesars pizza with ranch and double breadsticks and the large Coke on the side, you know, and then going in through the drive through not once, but twice, a few different ones. So I can have a couple different meals on hand. And that was only because I was numbing the unhappiness because I wasn't living up to this vision, this expectation of what I was envisioning for my life when I was younger. And so I felt deeply unhappy in that. And so together, because misery loves company, that's a saying for a reason. So together, my ex-fiance and I were just fast food eating and 
cigarette smoking junkies. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. I can't even picture you <laughs> like that. I really can't. Oh, it wasn't a weekend for me unless like I was blacked out drunk. Mm-hmm. And that was okay. the ma- <laughs> and that was like the majority of my teens and then into adulthood as well, the very beginning. It's so different. It's so wild how different and conscious our entire world is. Like look at the generation when we were in our 20s, the generation now is just so much more so conscious. different. It's so I different. think of it all the time. Right. But also all the young people on TikTok doing like their moves and stuff. It's so <laughs> funny. And the, our moves were like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. At us at that age. And then them doing like these full blown choreographed routines. It is such a different oh. generation. But but back to what you're saying, it's so true that like when we were that age, when I was in high school, when you were in high school, drinking, binge drinking was such a thing. I don't know if it still is in high school. It probably is, probably. but yeah. it's such um such an unconscious way yeah. to live, part of our journeys. Part but of our journeys and how? a big message for freedom. I think that that was one thing we were seeking so desperately was freedom and liberation because we were still so consumed by the way society wanted us to be. So we felt like we had to live up to a certain image and standard. And so we rebelled, right? For sure. So how old were you when you got engaged? Oh, wow. I was 21. Oh my gosh. And how long did you guys stay together after that? Two years. So two years of an engagement until I gave back the ring because... It was actually about a month after giving up fast food and starting to eat healthy, pure, clean foods. And, you know, I could just see not only was my physical weight shedding, but there was this energetic weight lifted as soon as I was just being more conscious of simply just the foods that I've consumed. Mm -hmm. That was it. That was like the very first piece. What led me into every part of my journey was simply just focusing on the physicality first. (laughs) That makes sense. Yeah. And then everything else started to unfold. So I, it was really, it was still one of the hardest things that this human had to experience was giving back that ring with somebody that I was so comfortable with and loved so much. But I knew I just had this inner knowing. And the first time I actually heard that other presence, that loving divine presence within me, like, you can do this. It's time for you to discover you, you know, to explore more of you. And so I honored that surprisingly. And then I just, went on to the solo journey for now, what, six years or so? Wow. Or, wait, eight years? I don't, I can't do math. Yeah. Well, we're both 29 yeah. now. Time yeah. has flown. So mm-hmm. what inspired that shift toward health and listening to that inner voice coming from that totally unconscious state of the fast food and drinking and all of those things? Right. Well, one of the other parts of this awakening, in a sense, it was the pre-awakening stages, was after I started to really focus on myself and my health, I actually also started to um, realize that the job I was in, though it was a dream job, I was working in entertainment, I got to work around celebrities, which is what my childhood self had dreamed of, right? And like just being surrounded in that atmosphere at all the live award shows. I was, I loved it, but I knew I had this deep inner knowing that I never, ever heard before until, oh, there's a hummingbird. See, there ah, we go. There, that's Utah. It's so meant to be. It's so meant to be. But um, it wasn't until after my very first yoga class in Shavasana, where I just really deeply heard like, it's, you can do this. It's time to move forward from even your job. And I was thinking, like, I was totally resistant to that inner voice, that inner knowing that I needed to move on from this. I'm like, this is my stability. I mean, I have an apartment in Santa Monica. Like, how in the world? Um, And that's when I started actually really diving into Abraham Hicks. And somehow, you know, that information landed on my lap, the information from Abraham Hicks and Jen Sincero and Eckhart Tolle, like all of this other information that made me realize like, okay, I'm going to trust in the universe, like quit my job. And then I fled to Bali for yoga teacher training. And then um, long story short, so I was, that's when I started to get into veganism because I got into health and spirituality and I want to explore that. But then when I started to, this is, this was a huge catalyst. You were a huge catalyst. This is where you came in because 
I went from what, about 180 pounds down to like 88 pounds. And it was, and I was eating, but I was so obsessive. And so I was like, and I, people were telling me that something was wrong and I didn't believe them until I decided to just do a little Google check. And that is where I ran into the writings of Jordan Younger on oh. orthorexia. And I was like, wait, what if this is actually a thing now? This can't be a thing. I'm totally fine and healthy. I'm eating all the time. But, you know, but I also was about to visit a hospital bed because, you know, there was an obsession. And so that obsession led to me obsessive about the physicality even more so. And that is when I realized I needed to step out and really fly to Bali on my own with literally nothing in my wallet, pretty much, and really go on to a deep, deep exploration while I gained my health back. (laughs) Wow. So what was that like to gain your health back? Because now you're so healthy, you glow, Mm -hmm. you are the epitome of balance and health and all of it. Yeah. So what was that (laughs) journey like, especially in the beginning? Because I know that that, that the beginning can be the hardest. Oh, it's... it took years and it's still something that I'm not going to say I'm perfect at. It's one of the greatest yet most beautiful messes of my life, but also messages and leads to greater expansion. What I'm saying is, is that when I finally did decide to, you know, just enjoy food of what was still vegan, but just enjoy food and not be so obsessive, I started to get into this space where I felt like I was the only one on this journey because no one was around me. And so I started to feel alone. And that's when a severe case of isolation and being comfortable in that isolation came in because I was so focused on making sure that I was getting my health back together. And it was so self-focused. But then the beautiful part about that is that it did open up my channel to being able to hear the voices, the feelings, the messages from my angels and guides that were really guiding me to go out and explore and be with other people. And that's when Ali came into my life and then went to India. And then that's when I started to surround myself with the beautiful people in Hawaii. And then that's when the podcast came in. And I started to surround myself with other yomis who were also going through the same sort of trajectory of understanding how our relationship with our physicality is so correlated to just like our deep spiritual journeys. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. (laughs) So then you really started living this dream life that many people try to manifest in Mm -hmm. their their lives of you moved to Hawaii with with Mm -hmm. Allie Michelle, the lovely Allie who's been on this podcast. You guys started your own magic, which has just a Die hard, loyal, beautiful community and following and listenership. <laughs> and you went from Hawaii to like all these amazing travels where I feel like you've kind of lived this nomadic life ever since. So, <laughs> yeah. how, did, how did all of that happen? <laughs> well, that take one thing I do want people to, because I have received that a lot, like I want to manifest a life like yours. And I'm like, Whenever people say that, first of all, there is that beauty that people see on our social media, right? But everybody is still going through the same thing. No matter where you're at, no matter how beautiful Mm -hmm. your paradise is, you're going on this journey for whatever reason. And it's interesting. I'm here in Utah. I was supposed to be in either LA or Hawaii at this time, but I'm here in Utah. Yet I am finding the most peace and balance than I ever have in a long time. So that being said, it does not really matter where you're at. And I couldn't emphasize that enough. What's so beautiful is when you really do find the power of loving what is, which is probably the most challenging thing to bring into our awareness is really seeing the beautiful knowing of the fact that you are exactly where you need to be. And I know that is so trite. But when you feel that, it's just like, there's so much peace. You know, one more thing I need to to, um, branch off of making that statement. Yesterday, 
uh, we were going to meet, but it's interesting. I led myself into the woods and I started having a big cry fest and shout fest because I needed to let go of a lot of energies that I, and, you know, just something that had really been holding me back and mm, weighing me down in some way. And I literally screamed it out in the middle of the woods here in Utah, which feels like home and it feels like it's holding my child self, right? And it made me look around and realize like, I know that I wished I was supposed to be where yada yada, but this is so perfect. And then all of a sudden, I just felt this overwhelming sense of love and peace and wishing that I know that some people are going through a hard time because they feel so stuck, literally stuck in their home because nobody can get out. Mm -hmm. But there's so much freedom in knowing that this is actually the time where we can really just explore ourselves and find that freedom from finding it within before the distraction of the dopamine hits that surround us. Right. So that was just one little message that I felt like delivering. <laughs> That's so beautiful. I have to tell you, as you were talking, your face was so alien. Like I was getting so distracted because your face was like glowing. Wow. Pleiadian vibes all the way. So Pleiadian. And so I never do remote interviews, you know, like I usually always do them in person, except for what's going on with quarantine right now. And so I can't believe that seeing you even through the screen, you are like a glowing Pleiadian alien. It is so cool. Can I just say the same though? Like your eye, I mean, you really are such a I know you really are. (laughs) But uh, yeah, that is another fascinating thing. Those voices in a sense that I was talking about angelic wise, I'm starting to realize that that really is just extraterrestrial consciousness. It is. Like I always say, well, it's a couple things. It's like, um, I think it's our souls coming yeah. from these cosmic realms to share this beautiful wisdom with us that is so needed. And it is also higher dimensional beings who may or may not be part of our souls as well, who are sharing with us. So our guides... <sighs> You're so alien. That's something I want to talk about too, to pivot into this because you are glowing alien right now. What is your experience with all of that? I mean, I know that you have led multiple retreats with Brie, our dear friend, Pleiadian channeler. Do you Not channel? What? Not just Pleiadian. She's oh, for sure. She, you're Pleiadian. right as well. And, but then we're starting to realize like, it really is all collectively the same, right? I think that, I think that a lot of different consciousness, they, whenever a message is being delivered, they might just refer to themselves as one label, right. perhaps because that is the easiest way for our human minds to not only relate as you're Jordan and I'm Raquel from our human selves and our minds, like labeling and identifying us. So that way we're able to understand the different messages, yet it's all related and all the same and all one, which I find so fascinating. And so, yeah, whenever she, she's definitely in different energy and you can feel it when she's channeling Arcturians, when she's channeling Jesus Cristo, Jesus, which triggered me for a bit. I did grow up in Utah and I was like, you can't channel Jesus. And when I recognized that voice was telling me, you can't channel Jesus. I was like, wait, that's one. Why not? Yeah. It's so interesting. And then, yeah, she has a completely different energy with the Palladians. It's so true. Absolutely. Yeah. So have you have you channeled these cosmic beings? So I've never had that direct channel experience like she is. And you, you've experienced the direct channeling many times. For me... Oftentimes when I whip out my phone and I just leave a voice note or something of some sort of message, I'm like, there's no way Raquel, Raquel's mind, silly Raquel could articulate it in that way. Yet at the same time, it felt so me, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so interesting. It's just a message and thought for me and I'll leave them on my voice notes. And then sometimes when I'm also podcasting, I feel a different energy shift. It's not just, I mean, you've seen Raquel like Raquel's human. And then there's also podcast more centered and present there, Raquel. Right. As well. Yeah. 
That makes sense. I think that's my experience mostly too, is that we are always channeling. And so, I mean, in a way, like, yes, for our human selves, we're Kel and Jordan, but on the podcast, solo episodes and things like, sometimes the words that come out are for sure channeled. And mm-hmm. and it's a beautiful thing. And that's what the Pleiadians have reminded me. Every time I ask, they're like, um, by the way, you're always channeling us. Like everything you say that is so wise or so what people needed to hear or whatever, like is coming from them in the first place. And so that's really cool to know that yeah. even if we're not consciously channeling, it can still happen. Exactly. But it's also a co collaborative creation, right? Because right. they can only share whatever knowledge in Jordan. I mean, we know an infinite number of whatever the messaging might be, but whatever even conscious Jordan knows, especially her vernacular, they'll use that, right? I've noticed that with all channels, they'll really use... That's true. And it does still sound like us. It's so interesting. (laughs) I know. It's so wild. But also even people that have no interest in a spiritual journey whatsoever. I've noticed our channels. I was listening to Gary Vee today. Actually, I listened to him a lot and I'm like, he indeed. He's such a channel. I think anyone on this earth who is doing things as big as him, who have like a voice as loud as his and a platform so large is channeling in a way because you have to be so in flow with the universe to be able to... Oh, to be yeah. able to create as much as he's created. And I feel like he's living in constant flow with the universe because he is... When is he not like on and putting out content? Not that that's what it means to be living in flow because sometimes you just can't be on and that's good too. But, but like, he blows like, me away. Mm-hmm. Blows me away as well. And also if you don't feel on sometimes, I recognize like that whatever I was going through yesterday was part of my expansion. Like I feel a, like a different person today than I was yesterday, right. which is often the case, right? But especially when you just have such an emotional, energetic release. It's so wild though, that it happened yesterday, literally around this exact same time. And so- it is interesting. Well, it's a very emotional time right now and a very powerful time with everything going on in the world. So I would love your take on all of that and how have you been feeling and how have you been dealing with the anxiety and like not being able to travel because I know you've just been a wanderluster for all these years and now you're home because we really... None of us can go anywhere. So how does that feel? Oh my gosh. Well, uh, so I was... experiencing extreme human anxiety when I was in the desert for a bit where I just almost felt so paralyzed. I needed to totally unplug and back away from all media, all technology, and just come back to my center because, and it's not to blame anybody around me, but of course, a lot of, I mean, most humans do easily because energy is so contagious, can easily, if they're not, you know, meditating constantly or just really consciously cutting the cord between them and other people in a sense. It's so easy to take on other energies. Love my parents to death. They live in a very stressed state at all times and have the news blasting. And so even though I've asked, you know, for it to not, I still would hear it or just take it on. And again, not to blame that, but I recognize like that was actually a beautiful thing that happened because I felt like I was in another state of darkness, of anxiety, of actually even um, my mom was like, I think you're bipolar or depressed because you'll be one minute so heavenly and lovely. The next minute you're like, so sad and down and I don't know how to like get you out of it. Right. And highly sensitive people. That's (laughs) what we are. I'm like, this is actually so good because I'm exploring something that I haven't in so long. And it's so um, a relieving because now I have another message that I can share. <laughs> so yeah. it's to ha- change that perspective. But when you're in it, it sucks. It sucks. And you just feel like you can't get out of it, that this is going to be the way things are. And that I honestly had a moment where I just was feeling like a failure. So I'm like, look, I have this 
beautiful spiritual podcast, people expect something to me. And then I'm like, no, it's okay. You're not any sort of soul model, role model, whatever. You're human. Mm-hmm. And you, your soul I wanted to have this experience to live it all for all exploration and all expansion. And I see that with all people. I was listening to the Demi Lovato song, Sober, and just started to cry because I felt like I wasn't sober anymore, right? As far as being so tuned in, I just felt so lost. And so with weighted, weighted, weighted down. And I just felt like I couldn't lift any rock that was weighing on my chest. And just releasing those tears and recognizing like, look, there's still, you're human. And there's still so much that you have experienced traumas that you've experienced. And you're having a lot of triggers right now with your family. It's okay. Like, and just allow yourself to experience it and release it at this time. Like, this is such a beautiful time because you're literally about to butterfly. And so, yes, absolutely. The cocoon. The cocoon. So, what I did as well, like, I started alchemizing this anxiety, I would say, with uh, art. I started actually drawing, making little sketches and painting. And I ordered a um, drawing tablet so I can start drawing on the cocoon writing and yeah, the bit, the best way to alchemize it and process it. If um, aside from obviously going to a hypnotic state and really releasing it or plant medicine or something mm-hmm. but to use that, to share art so people can allow themselves as well to feel and release. Yeah. So true. And you're such a beautiful writer and oh. poet so have you been writing very much lately? Absolutely. I've, that's the way that I, that's my therapy. That's the way I process. And sometimes my poems are very um, human, I would say. Like if I feel my human self was betrayed or angry at something, you know, I write it in a poem, but then it's like, that's the way that it alchemizes, right? You just allow it to release onto there instead of vomiting out onto someone else and having them soak in that energy. Instead, you just allow it to come into beautiful words and then you feel so liberated because you're like, oh, wait, it's all okay. It's always good. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I love your writing. I love your poetry. I hope we can see a poetry book from you soon. (laughs) And that is actually, uh, I can, I'll show you the cover after this. Oh my God, what? So this is happening. Oh yeah, I have, I mean, all the illustrations are there. The poems have been there since, I mean, I've been writing since high school in a sense, but I've really only kept the poems from 2017. And I've actually, um, just because a lot of them don't resonate anymore, I have cut a lot of them out and added some more new ones. But then Annie Tarasova, who's my illustrator, she was like, you should keep a lot of the older ones because that's going to be something that resonates with others. So now I'm just like, working out with what goes in, what comes out. But yeah. Oh, okay. I can't wait to see the cover. I'm so excited for you. Yeah, I'll send you like the poems. You can help me slash and... I will. I will. I get what you're saying though, because I've been talking about that lately about about my first book, which is not a poetry book, but just how that does not describe who I am anymore at all. But people ask me sometimes, do I regret writing it because my life has changed so much? And I always say, not at all, because that book meets people where they are. And I needed it at that time. You needed it at that time. And a lot of people need it now because here we are, you know, like we've changed. But it always meets people where they are. So, yes, it's changed a lot, but... Absolutely. Like when you asked me about the journey and where it starts, and of course I've shared this story before, but I feel so detached from it. I even feel detached from the beginning of your own magic's journey. And right. And like that's such... That's where I was. I, I was in such a different state and frame of mindset, you know? Let's talk about vegan protein bars. So given that Raquel and I are both diehard plant-based lovers, we are all about the plants, 
I wanted to talk about my favorite company, Go Macro. That is my go to for all things vegan protein bars, vegan food on the go. Go Macro bars are TBB approved in every way because they're made from simple, high quality ingredients and are certified organic, vegan, gluten free, kosher, non GMO, clean, raw, and soy free. And before I go on, I want you to know that you can use the code BLONDE for 30% off plus free shipping. And they are doing something amazing this month for the month of May, which as a diehard animal lover and vegan, this makes me so happy and I'm so proud to be a part of it. So throughout the month of May, 10% of the net proceeds from Go Macro's peanut butter macro bar, which is such a good flavor will be donated to Farm Sanctuary. So as one of the nation's largest animal sanctuaries, Farm Sanctuary has rescued thousands of animals and has cared for them at its sanctuaries in New York and California and remains committed to ending cruelty to farm animals by promoting compassionate vegan living through rescue, education, and advocacy. So if you guys follow me on Instagram or really follow me at all, then you probably know that my dream is to open an animal sanctuary. I am so pleased that Go Macro will be donating 10% of their proceeds from their peanut butter macro bar this month to Farm Sanctuary. I'm so happy to be a part of it. So everybody listening, if you guys order their peanut butter bar with the code BLONDE for 30% off, you will be supporting Farm Sanctuary. You'll be supporting the animals. You'll be supporting the education that goes into ending animal cruelty. You'll be supporting the rescue of these sweet, sweet animals. And this just makes me so happy. So their peanut butter flavor is also delicious. It's made with crunchy roasted peanuts and Go Macro's very own melt in your mouth peanut butter chips. They taste delicious. They support animal advocacy. I don't know why you wouldn't order. I feel like I'm going to hop off this recording and order so many just to show my support. Um, I'm so happy to hear this. And Go Macro itself is such a special company. They're mother daughter owned, they're based in a rural community, and their mission is to spread awareness for a balanced plant based lifestyle with products that have a positive effect on the world. So enjoy. Use that code BLONDE for 30% off. Know that you're supporting Farm Sanctuary. And now let's head back into this episode with Raquel. My podcasting journey for the last almost four years like, uh, is my spiritual awakening journey. It's literally captured in all of these episodes because I, I went from talking about like entrepreneurial journeys and blogging and um, products and whatever, which is still cool stuff to meeting crystal healers and mediums and people who have opened my mind in huge ways. That brings me to a good question for you. Um, who, uh, Who of your podcast guests have really opened your mind and taught you something very new or something that changed your life? Well, obviously you are one of them. We'll get to you after I mention these others. Um, So one person that came to mind when we were talking about Gary V and how he indeed receives so many downloads because he's always on was uh, uh, Teal Swan. She Mm -hmm. told me that I have a lot of guides around, but then obviously the more you do get out there and reach more people, Uh, She said that the more guides start to come to you or you have more people around. I was thinking Gary V probably just has this whole army, you know, not only protecting him, but helping him deliver all these messages that are really healing people. Like I used to literally transform in three minutes and it's like, what, you know, I, that is dream. (laughs) He's like gold. He's my dude, Oprah Winfrey. Mm -hmm. And, (laughs) um, But so Teal Swan was one also because at that time I was, that's when I was living in London and I was going through a pretty dark period, like a very, very dark period. And I was isolating again and not allowing myself to be seen by anybody. I wasn't even posting on Instagram for what, a year and a half or so. And she was just delivering all these messages that I feel I wasn't even talking about, but she, it was as if she just knew what I was going through and it helped isolation. And, um, I mean, she did just have a book come out about that, but 
there were so many messages in there, especially like dealing with isolation means that you're hiding from something and you just really are too afraid to face it. And that was a huge truth. And that took so much time to like really muster the courage to do so. Yeah. She's a reflector too. Oh, she is. As far as I know, um, someone told me that someone I trust in human design. So yeah. Oh, what? That is amazing. Uh, And then Brie, of course, has changed my world in so many ways that that would take like a whole podcast. And as well as you, there's, I've already delivered this as well. Not only was it when I first met you, but there's a hummingbird, but when, hummingbird, but, um, again, because you're a reflector, you know, you'll observing your journey. And I actually don't really, um, overly observe a lot of others journeys, but observing yours and watching yours always is a reflection of what I'm going through at the time. And so I literally could just, you know, let's say I'm having a down moment. I can just go to your post and it like lights me up, you know, because you're so honest with your healing and everything and what you're experiencing. And maybe I'm not, I don't have a chronic illness, but that can also still translate to other things, such as mental health, right? Or what other people are going through. So, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I love hearing that. That's so cool. Well, you've had so many awesome guests on your podcast. I'm sure they have all influenced you in different ways. Teal Swan and Byron Katie, you, Brie. Cool. Oh, Byron yeah. Katie. <laughs> I, I don't know. Her on. Yeah, I had her on around the same time as Teal. That's and awesome. She, I felt like I was finally seen. And I was at that time, the only person I was really talking to was Allie's mom, Joni. And um, yeah, I remember Joni was like, I was listening to that. And Byron, she saw you. And I was like, I know. Oh, I love that. Allie's mom seems so sweet. I, oh my gosh. She's amazing. She's That's so cool. I would love to chat with you. I know. Oh, I would love to chat with her too. So cool. So, okay. So this is a question I've, I've had for you forever because I heard you mention it on your podcast, but we've never talked about it. So if you're open to discussing this, you talked on your podcast about when you were a child being kidnapped yeah. like twice. Yeah. And that literally blows my mind. And if you're open to talking about it, I would love to hear more and just how that affected you and also how that even happened. And I'm obsessed with stories about kidnapping. And like Jonathan will tell you, that's the majority of like TV that I watch. So I cannot believe this happened to you. Oh my gosh. I wonder if you were kidnapped in a past life. Yeah. It happened to me twice. And I actually passed the tree. I passed the tree often. That was the place where one of the kidnapping events happened. So it happened outside. I need to like go and meditate at that tree. Yeah. <laughs> I do, but I have a resistance too. But yeah, so the first one, the first episode, I was uh, at a birthday party and we were all playing hide and go seek outside of our condominiums. And there was a giant tree in front of this dude's apartment and I decided to hide behind the giant tree. And then the man, he came outside and he (laughs) looks at me, he actually grabs me and he's like, let's play. And then (laughs) and just like... um trails or grabs onto me really, really tightly. And I just remember that's when I started screaming. And I remember this, our babysitter, Holly, she was just about 10 years old and she was the babysitter of these four-year-olds, five-year-olds, right? And she just clicks the kids and screams for her mom to call the police. Fortunately, so he takes me inside. So lucky that there was a sheriff literally down the street. It was like, you know, the angels were indeed watching because he, the sheriff came in there in two seconds. I felt like I was not in there a long time. Right. So it was such a short kidnapping. But it was what was more- he planning on doing? No, but he did take me inside. He w- was living with a nun. So there could have been just some sort of, he could have innocently been dragging me in there or not. But yeah, I know that it was very creepy. <laughs> um, yeah, my dad, he's like, that was the first time I actually thought about murdering someone. I was like, oh, like that. So glad it didn't go there. Yes. But, <laughs> and then um, the other time was I was at the mall with my mom. And at the, I mean, it was the 90s, right? So elevators were... Not every elevator was smart and automatic and can send someone right there. And so 
this one was pretty fast when it would shut and when it would open. And so when we got on the elevator, I was just this, you know, right behind my mom holding onto her pants. And she walks out first. And then there was an old man in the back left corner um, who was standing there. He grabs me as my mom's walking out and then presses the close button. So it closes his right away. And he keeps his hand over my mouth. And my mom's obviously banging on the elevator like, my child, my child. So this smart man, he's like in public kidnapping a girl. And so I'm so, again, so lucky. lucky. The angels had my back. And um, it was only, it was shortly, moments later, we couldn't even get out of the elevator. We stayed in the elevator for a while until security did finally come in and like get him. And he went to jail. (laughs) And I went, Yeah. That's so scary. So mm-hmm. how do you feel like did, that has affected you throughout your life? In- I have a hard time still trusting men. And I get like these weird vibes with older men um, all the time, it, unless he's like related to me or around my age. So like, Jonathan, you don't give me the creep. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Good. Oh my yeah, God. Men, I, I can't believe that that happened to you twice. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so happy that it was short-lived and that you were safe and that nothing traumatizing beyond that happened to you with these men. But that is so scary. And I feel like you're just so strong. And knowing that our souls came here for a reason and to experience different experiences in this life, somehow that was part of your journey. And probably, I don't know, added to your strength at a very young age and also just that's a lot it's a lot to overcome so I wonder when it comes to like the eating issues that you had or like the stuffing your face with the food and then drinking like I'm sure it's all intertwined all of it all of that and also the isolation was part of that as well because I didn't want to be loved or seen because I was still dealing with not only that trauma, but other traumas. And yeah, the eating was for sure part of wanting a sense of control, right? So we're when I started restricting the eating and it's, yeah, it all is intertwined with all of our traumas. We think that it's because we want to live up to a certain image or look a certain way, but there's so much when you go deeper, you just ask yourself, let's take this one there deeper one layer deeper and then you continue to go deeper and you can really, really see where it lies and the whole reasoning for it all. And me, it was the sense of unworthiness as like many, many people who decide to go on this journey, but even just honestly, most every child deals with bullying. I didn't really have friends. I just had a lot of people, a lot of people that didn't like me in school. So there was this- Why? I feel like you're so likable. (laughs) I, I actually, I genuinely don't know. I look at my little girl self and she was such an adorable little loving girl. I have no idea, but uh, I did look a lot like some of the popular girls or something. I don't know. I genuinely don't know. And it's fine because I'm so thankful for that journey. Yet it made me feel like I needed to prove myself or be a certain way. And then when I started getting quote unquote pretty, that's when I started being validated for my looks and people started to see me and like me. And so then that started to be like where I received validation and just kind of went down that path for a long time. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Wow. That's all. So many women that have that where they feel it's their looks where they need to find their validation or their intelligence or what are other common ones? Their looks, their intelligence, their talent. You know, yeah, so many different things. I mean, just the things that we've always been praised for. Mine was the opposite because I was always praised for having a lot of friends and for everyone liking me, quote unquote, and those kinds of things. So if ever anyone didn't like me, uh, it's like my sense of identity was shattered because that's what I was always praised for was was being nice and being likable and having friends. And so all of a sudden, yeah, when people didn't like me, I was like, oh my God, who even am I then? Because that's what I've based my entire self-worth around. And no wonder you are so free in sharing what you truly believe in, no matter how out there other people might 
think that it seems. And I just want to so honor you for that. Is that something you've been an expander for me in that way as well? Because I was so afraid of coming out of the spiritual closet for so long. And so that I remember listening to your podcast and you were so open about this. I was like, you know what? Who cares? I'm just going to be as right. well. I know it's true. And now I think about it and like, because of living such a public life, I'm yeah. so aware that there is so many people who probably hate me and I don't even know who they are or where they are or anything. Yeah. Um, and of course, I hear negativity all the time, but I'm not concerned with it at all anymore. And yeah, I guess I've just come so far and you have too. Mm-hmm. And- you had a huge scandal, right? I've had a few. <laughs> <laughs> Which scandal are we talking about? Oh my God. Um, I stopped being vegan very publicly. And then... That's what it was. Yeah. And now, you know, I'm like completely vegan again and had been plant-based, almost fully plant-based that whole time. But yeah, the scandal was the vegans wanted to kill me. And it was very traumatic for a handful of years but I'm thankful for it because it gave me a much thicker skin and nothing can really like, it takes a lot to really, really upset me now. Like some kind of mean comment online because I, nobody can top what I've already dealt with, with like the hundreds of thousands of um, hate messages I was getting and death threats. And that was very scary. So death threats, death threats. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That is the next level cyberbullying that I'm just, everybody that has experienced that I can't help but honor because that's not something that every, I mean, that's clearly just shows God gave that to you because of how strong you are. And that I think so. Your strength, especially sure. everything else that you've gone through. So you're, oh, I just love you so much. <laughs> I love you so much. So I'll, much. One message when it does come to hate or uh, negative comments, which even no matter how big you are in the public eye or just, you know, share any sort of message out there openly and freely, there's always somebody listening that is probably going to share some negative comment or something because they're simply just projecting from a lower state and That is their way of trying to reclaim a power, but then they recognize eventually. I can't tell you how many apology notes I've received. (laughs) Simply just like their way at that time of coping. And so you can't help that when they do send some sort of hate, that they're really going through something. I know. It's always a reflector. Mm -hmm. I know. Well, that's so funny being a reflector and when people say these mean things to me, because what I want to say to them is, don't you understand? I'm literally reflecting you back to you. So (laughs) very unhappy. But of course, I can't say that. I just block and delete. But once I realized that even beyond the reflector thing, that people are always projecting how they feel onto others and happy people don't waste their time with sending mean messages or with even listening to a podcast that they don't like, you know? So that's what I've realized. And that's why it's like lovingly block and delete. Goodbye. See you never. Totally fine. Um, Interesting thing. I should have blocked there sometimes because I'll see them look at the stories and I'll be like, triggered and I'll be like, what do they think? I'm like, no, no, no. I don't even need to think about what they think. So that is that is wise, but I'll have this sense where I just maybe it's a Leo trying to please and yeah. Block, no, I get that. When I even if everybody, everybody, whether you are big on social media or not, just posting anything that's vulnerable or just anything at all. Like my I posted um some bikini pictures what like four or five months ago. And I received, not only did I lose so many followers, which is fine, but I received so many nasty messages about them. So what? I was down and then I was like, no, I'm, gonna- I'm shocked. I didn't even know that. Because I think people want me to, or they have an image that they've created when it comes to people that should be spiritual. So you shouldn't post other things, right? There's like a, you know what I mean? That is so not true. The cool thing about being spiritual and being a human is that we are so multifaceted and we can be everything and anything and we can be interested 
I mean, I always say I'm a spiritual person. I channel, I watch Vanderpump Rules. Like I do all these things and there's no, there should be no judgment about any of that. Cause I'm just, I'm just a human. I'm just me expressing itself in this human body and enjoying the pleasures of life. So exactly. Amen. I, I thought your bikini pictures were beautiful. Thank you. I was feeling really, really good. I was feeling really, really good. And then they were from um, Bali, right? Yeah, they were from Bali. My friend Danielle took them. Yeah. And I was like, let's do it. This is, I haven't posted stuff like this in ages. I haven't posted in ages. You hadn't <laughs> posted in like over a year. Wait, talk about that for a second. You took like the biggest social media detox any <laughs> like person has ever taken. <laughs> what was that like? Honestly, at first it was very freeing because it was super intentional, but, um, actually, you know what, the entire time it was a, such a beautiful experience and I probably would have experienced that dark period, even if I was on social media. But I think that when I did take off to London and not even, you know, share my world, share my life, except for on the podcast, um, and I just fully tuned within I was really going through so much, like really, really exploring what this soul was, especially as I was exposed to another person who really inspired me was Ainsley McLeod. And he really um, exposed me to my soul. And then I was remembering all these other things. And I just, it was too much to go on social media and just see what was going on with everyone else. Cause I felt as I was going, I was um, going through so much. So I, any time I download the app, there'd be moments where I was like, okay, I'll just download the app. Keep tell people I'm alive. And then I would download the app and then be consumed with anxiety. And so then I deleted it and I just honored that for period for so long. But I was really wearing um, a dark lens only for my expansion. And I didn't know that at the time. I thought I was just depressed and spiritual. <laughs> that was really like, because I was, didn't realize this, but I was shifting into a higher state of consciousness where now like, I, I literally, I don't know the last time I've been able to actually judge someone. Wow. In a way. I can be harsh on myself sometimes, but then I recognize that voice. I'll recognize that that voice is just a silly voice that, you know, can take a back seat. Cause she's yeah. not, and we all have her. We all have her. What Byron Katie said, inner mean girl. Yeah, no, totally. You should write a book about that because I feel like letting go of judgment is one of the hardest things to do as a human, even as a spiritual person. I mean, I definitely find myself judging the, my haters at times because I'm like, why do you, why do you care? Like that kind of thing. And and then I catch myself in my more. Um, calm and peaceful moments. But yeah. I think if you if you've mastered that in many ways, you should just do something with that. It's very powerful. I'm not gonna say I've mastered it, but I when it comes to just like I'm talking about the type of judgment where you actually dislike, really, really grossly dislike someone. And then that was actually triggered when that when someone came into my life. And they came out recently, which you know. So I do remember the last time that happened. And that was actually just the start of this year. Okay. Well, that would be hard not to be upset about that because that was a bit bit unevolved. (laughs) No, but it was honestly also so... That's the thing. I'm like, okay, I can see where he was at. And also just like meet him with... I'm not going to say I'm meeting that person with love, but just meet him with the fact that... Thank you. Thank you helping me realize like this is way more than honesty and spirituality and trust. It's truly just living and being human. And so people are probably like, what is she talking about? That's probably something that's a, that's a personal experience that I don't want to expose anybody, but let's just say, you know, there are people that are going to come into your life and it's going to happen to me again. Hopefully it's not a man, but they'll come into your life. They teach you a major lesson. And then it's up to you to feel like a victim from that lesson or take your power and reclaim it. Everybody that comes into your life, but especially those who might, you might feel rejected or abandoned by in some way or lied to. Yes. That's so powerful. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> That's And it's true. 
Okay, so I want to ask you the rapid fire questions that I ask everybody yes. who comes on. I love it. What are your sun rising and moon signs? I'm a double Leo sun and moon. So dangerous. Love. And then my rising is cancer. Of so that <laughs> balances you out. I love my love my Leos, you and Jonathan and my dad and so many people that I love. And I love my Libras, my brother, you. Yes. You sent me that amazing article about Libras yesterday. That was very spot on for a BuzzFeed article. I felt like I related to every word. I know. And then they had the Leo one. And then I sent Brie a Scorpio one because she's an evolved Scorpio. So it's so funny because we'll be like, this is old Brie. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. She's yeah. so evolved. She's so I love her. Another level. I know. I love she her. Is. What is something that people, that most people do not know about you? Oh man. Um, give me a topic. Um, okay. What's something? Hmm. If I, if I did like a sports team, it would be the Utah Jazz, but I don't really like sports. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of random topics as I look around. Yes. I am not the best skier, but I miss it dearly. And I don't think I could ever date a hunter. There Same. I totally get it. Even though Hunter is my middle name. I don't know if you know that. Sweet. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, it's another way to describe a hunter though, because I mean, you do hunt a lot of spiritual modality. Oh, for sure. Yes. <laughs> a hunter in a different way. Yeah. Um, where do you see yourself 10 years from now? I can't. I don't. And I don't have any desire to. I'm I like so that. You're living for... in the now. Yeah. Well, and I do like to think about the future, but 10 years from now, nah. Yeah. Can't. Okay. That's, <laughs> I like that. Um, what are your favorite foods? Oh, okay. So I love, love, love everything at Alchemy, which is a place in oh. food that Jordan and I... <laughs> I miss alchemy. I literally dream about alchemy. Last night, I was eating this like... I was just eating a date with almond butter. And I was saying to Jonathan, that this is like the best dessert, better than any dessert. And he's like, better than alchemy? I'm like, no. Wait, no. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's better than alchemy. Definitely not. No, at my retreat as well, um, we had amazing desserts from this amazing restaurant called Conscious foods or something like that, conscious meals. And they made amazing vegan desserts, right? But one day they couldn't make their raw vegan cheesecake for whatever reason. So instead, my assistant Lindsay and I, we just pulled out dates and put in almond butter. And literally everybody's like, this is the best thing on God's green earth. It's just it's so good. It's so simple and so delicious. Yeah. And that's one of them for sure. I also love vegan pizza. Me too. And I love them. Um, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Vegan pizzas usually never, ever fail me. Never disappoints. <laughs> no. Are you a night person or a morning person? I'm such a morning person. Like the, I can't function at night. I try. I remember I interviewed Sahara Rose once and she was talking about how she likes to create at night. And I was like, I'm going to try this. See what creativity comes out of me. Nope. I was out. Yeah. Actually, you know, it's interesting, like you, I'm quite an insomniac, so it's sometimes hard for me to sleep, like have a full proper sleep, but I can't function properly at night. I can't around like 3, 4 a.m. as long as I've had some sort of rest. Yeah. 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 Okay. I love that. I've always wanted to be a morning person and I'm not one. So I think that's great. (laughs) I know you text me so late. It felt like you're like, I'm just getting started with my day. I was like, so I've late. lived an entire day. <laughs> I know. I looked and you had texted me at like 7.30 a.m. And at like 11, I was like, Raquel, I did not sleep. I am in my sauna. But I've learned to just embrace that about myself. And I'm definitely a late night creator. I love that. Well, you a lot of late night creators, night owls, they just truly get so much done as well. I think, I mean, maybe in business, there's a lot of entrepreneurs that say, you know, you should wake up at 5 a.m. and get it all done. But it's like, no, we'll learn what your rhythm is and honor that rhythm and work at the best times, create at the best times for you. Yeah. I know around this time, it's good that we're just having a conversation. But like, for some reason, I'm like a blob around this time because I woke up 
what around like five, four thirty or five a.m. So, <laughs> oh my god, that's so early! You really are an early morning person. Such an early morning person. I love to have my podcast early as well because that's when I feel like I am at my peak. Yeah, I love that. Um, what's your favorite workout? Yoga and long. See, I you cannot make me choose between these two. No one can make me choose between these two. It's both yoga and long, long walks. Yes. In the woods, in nature, in the forest, long, long walks. Today's was five miles, but I like longer. <laughs> oh, that sounds amazing. I can't wait for my walk after this. Um, coffee or tea? Coffee. That's my favorite drink too of all time. I know, I know, but you know what? I'm not sorry. Same. Coffee's the best. Not drinking it right now, but it's my favorite thing. And I can't wait until my body can handle it a little bit better. You're going to just appreciate it that much more. Mm -hmm. Exactly. What what are you substituting coffee with then if you are? So uh, I'm having dandy blend, which I love. It's like dandelion. It really tastes like coffee. I mean, it's not the same, but it gives that like very roasty taste. So I'll do Dandy Blend. I'll sometimes do Four Sigmatic, Chaga. Um, But honestly, right now, it's just like celery juice um, Mm -hmm. or green juice because I'm trying to be super alkaline leading into my next fast. I leave. By the time this episode comes out next week, I'll be there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Getting ready for it. I'm water fast for a week with you. Please. Yes. Everyone listening, Raquel has done a super long water fast too. So I'm not the only water fast. Yours was very inspiring for me. You're the one that inspired mine. But yours was long and you did it at an ashram. I did it at an ashram. So I had some help, but I did. And then I left the ashram to try to finish it. And a couple days later, that's when I was like, all right, it's time for food. Yeah. Cause yours was how many days? 22. Yeah, that's forever. My upcoming one, the one that I'll be doing when this episode comes out, my goal is three weeks. So oh, just about like the exact that's same. Yeah, that's wow. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. If you were a color, what color best represents your energy? This is always your question. I love it. Right now, I feel a little like a light pink hue mixed yellow. What would be like Ooh. a light pink yellow hue? That's pretty. <laughs> that sounds like a flower, like a gorgeous flower. A flower or a fairy. Yeah. Fairy. Such fairy <laughs> energy. What is on the horizon for you? Mm, love. <laughs> yes. I see it. Jordan's looking me up. No, um, but what's truly on the horizon, I really am launching the book. I was about to say the title, not quite yet though, um, but <laughs> keeping that under wraps. Yay. Uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm really excited about that launch, that poetry book, because it's been part of my heart for so long now. And I decided to keep the poems in that I started writing when I really began this journey and started diving in fully. I can't wait to read it. I can't wait for all of us to read it. And I can't wait to see the cover and know all the things. I'm so proud of you. Thank you, love. I love you so much. I love you. So lastly, what is your definition of soul on fire? Ooh. (sighs) Someone who is, who fearlessly approaches life, seeing their fears, and using whatever their fears are as a guide to alchemize whatever their message is going to be. Somebody that uses those fears and really faces life and doesn't let them define them. Beautiful. <laughs> well, you definitely live that kind of life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you do too. You do too, my love. Thank oh. you. Well, this was so fun. Tell everybody where they can find you. It was fun. Thank you. Um, you can find me on podcasts, any podcast, Your Own Magic, Spotify, Apple, and what's the other one? CastBox, all over the place. And then Instagram, Raquel Mantra. 
And yeah, that's about it. Oh yeah. And I have a Facebook group with very, very amazing, like-minded spiritual gals. You can share whatever you're going through. And I know that there's gonna be somebody that is on it to help you. It's like free, very conscious therapy. (laughs) It's such an amazing group, such a, such an active group. Every single time I'm on Facebook, I see people writing in there and I'm always like for a second, wait, is that the soul on fire group? Because it's, there's such similar conversation. Yeah, for sure. Like, oh wait, no, of course, this is your own magic. Like I see it every day. Same soul on fire. I see that as well. Yeah. Soul on fire and your own magic. Very, very, very similar groups. Absolutely. I'm sure we have a lot of crossover listeners. Absolutely. We should come up with the name, the soul on your own magic or oh, the soul mad magic soul your own magic on fire yes <laughs> yes so everybody listening if you guys are your own magic on fire peeps you have to let us know let us know on instagram or in the facebook groups we're just so grateful I, we love you so much so so much and jordan i love you I so love you. You are so missed. I want to be back in Bali with you and Christina and Jonathan and all the people. We just need to go back. Absolutely. I know. And when all of this is finally dissipated a bit and the world feels so open and free too, let's go to Bali. And also you come here to Utah and I want to take you and Jonathan on the most magical hikes and nature ventures of your life. Please. I've never been to Utah, so I would love that. You two will love it. I will fall in love. Moon type spot for sure. I can't wait. (laughs) I love you so much. Beautiful. Thank you. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed that episode with Raquel as much as I did. Raquel is such a dear friend of mine. She means so much to me. The fact that she was my first guest on Zoom and my first guest in so long in general is a testament to how much I love her and how much I wanted to share her voice and her message with you guys. If you don't already listen to your own magic, you will love it. She really does have a very special Facebook group that you should also check out. And I can't wait for her poetry. I can't wait for all of it. I love that she shares so authentically and is just such a kind human, the true definition of a spiritual soul in a human body, inside and out. And I love her. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you enjoyed this episode, please, please do consider leaving a rating and review on iTunes. And if you do, I will thank you by sending you my free yoga ebook. So my yoga ebook for free. It's not usually free. If you send me a screenshot of your rating and review to jordan at thebalanceblonde.com. And this would honestly just mean so much to me. And it's a fun way to connect with you guys, to email you back and thank you personally for listening to the show. Um, and feel free to introduce yourself and tell me all the things about you in the email. And um, yeah, the ratings and reviews, they just help with visibility in iTunes and they help with everything about the show. So I would be so grateful and so honored if you have the time, if you could find the time to do that. And I will thank you. You the yoga ebook for free via email. And I also wanted to thank our fabulous sponsors for today's episode for Sigmatic. You can use that code blonde for 15% off of their adaptogenic mushroom lattes and coffees. And then Go Macro, who is donating a portion of their proceeds this month to Farm Sanctuary, which makes me so freaking happy as an advocate for the animals and a lover of veganism and the animals. So use that code BLONDE for 30% off. Get their peanut butter bar to donate to the animals. And just so grateful for our sponsors of the show. And thankful for you guys who are listening. So send me all the love in my water fast this week and next week and the following. And I can't wait to keep connecting. Um, If you have requests for future episodes or guests, send them in to me on Instagram or email. I love to be connected with you guys. We have our Soul on Fire podcast tribe with almost 5,000 amazing human beings connecting from all over the world. So join us there and sending you love. 
Have a fabulous day. Mwah.